Marcus Alita 3 was a early 1950s folding camera that shot 120 roll film. You get 12 6x6 frames per roll. Uh, the early ones, the way you loaded them was open the back, you put the film in on the right side of the camera, and you just put it in there just a little bit so it sticks out the other end just a hair and then you wind it close it up and you're ready to go one thing about these cameras <clears throat> that a lot of photographers did in the day was they would very often <clears throat> find that the film would get scratched going across the rollers so they would take and I've seen all kinds of things they do putting uh, fingernail polish or paint or different glues and tapes and anything they can to keep it from scratching their film as it passes through. You've got a nice little depth of field scale here. A cold flash shoe which actually you run a sink cable to your flash. Uh, and then the self timer on this. This is a Comper rapid shutter on the earliest models. The earliest that I'm aware of. Uh, Comper rapid shutter which is pretty nice. It was 1 400th of a second was its maximum speed and it had a self timer that was built into the shutter wind her which you pull it back and then you do like that. There's a timer switch right here which will allow you to in bulb mode you can lock the shutter open and then close it by pressing that back down pretty simple camera did the job nice and small fits in your pocket uh, the shutter is nothing more than just a button here which moves a lever right there now this one the self timer is a little sticky so I'm gonna make sure and kinda help it I haven't used it in a while still works the next thing they did was that they made a little change to it with the Prontour S shutter this one only goes to 1 250th of a second but it has a self timer down here and it adds the option for a cable release like I'm using here that one self timer there depth of field scale still here still got a cold flash mount you should call it here it'll go in here to sync up there um, that's about it for that one that's about the changes for that one went to the lens changed to a 10 bladed Schneider Kruznach uh, Radio NAR 82.9 they're all 82.9s but this one adds a 10 bladed aperture um, everything else a little bit of a trim change the big change there was the lens they made a little trim change that you can see here and this one takes away the option for the uh, timer mode and it also requires you now to advance the film before it will fire the shutter if you just clock the shutter in the lens it will not work unless you advance the film so in my opinion this was a little bit of a downgrade for the Franco Salita 3 um, then the Schneider lenses made a little change here and it, it still says uh, Franca up here The next big change that was made was the uh, change to the Prontour SV shutter which adds a flash sync or manual sync option for the shutter. It looks a little sleeker and some of them, the later ones as you see here, has a 300th of a second instead of a 250th of a second. So a little bit of an upgrade there. Uh, this one, uh, there's a nice little trim change, and this one came with a nice leather case. And, and they also changed the direction of the film movement. It now goes from left to the right, like your typical 35mm camera 
or most cameras for that matter. Flash placement is a little bit better, still not, you know, I, I don't know if one's better than the other, but this one's probably a little handier on your head. It's probably not in the way you're, where you're looking quite so much. The next change that was made was a coupled range finder. And there may have been some uncoupled ones, but the next change I've seen is a coupled range finder, which allowed you to, when looking through the viewfinder, you can focus and find your focusing distance with a little dial on the back. There's also a, on the back, a magnification for checking critical focus that you can look through. So they added a couple real nice features along the way at the, in the later years that were really for advanced photographers to, to use. And finally, <clears throat> the latest version that I'm aware of <clears throat> adds the SVS shutter, which you'll notice there's no self-timer switch down here. It's because it's now up in the same switch as the manual or flash sync options next to the aperture. There's uh, <clears throat> also this one had a three hundredth of a second and a very nice and sleek coupled range finder without the super zoomed in checking critical focus. Maybe that wasn't working well for him or something. I don't know why, but that is no longer there. Film still on this side. And the last change that they made was now it says Solita 3 on the top on these last two versions. So a couple of cosmetic changes there. A little bit about this lens, the Schneider Kruznach Radionar 80 f 2.9. It is a cook triplet design and pretty long uh, focal length cook triplet design for how fast it is. F 2.9, that's typically the speed of a 50 millimeter lens of the day. Focus down to about three feet. A very nice portrait lens. A superb lens for flowers such as these. The image circle on it is huge. You can really zoom in and still maintain a really nice image. Macro it out. And you can see I've got one adapted back there to my modern digital camera really fine contrast lens. If you're doing black and white, if you're doing night stuff, you're doing really low light stuff where you need maximum light transmission. Three very thin high lead uh, really loaded lens. Just a gem of a lens. Gorgeous glass. There are no modern lenses like this that I'm aware of. The only lens I know of that's very similar is the Baldewerk Bunday Baltar 82.9. Virtually the same exact lens as the Schneider Kruznach. The same shot glass, I'm pretty sure. Uh, very fine lenses, both of them. Almost the exact same camera. This one's one of the more advanced ones with a coupled range finder film advance uh, still on the weird side and a modern what Prontor SVS shutter this one's very much similar to this last one here that I've got and, uh, and I would say I've done tests of the Baltar and the Radionar they're identical I can't tell them apart they're both coated those little red marks that's what that means Oh yeah, I know what. I'm going to show you a little trick I know. This is for if you're going to adapt it, these radio NAR lenses to a modern camera, which is something that I do highly recommend if you can find one. If you don't want to take it apart and destroy it, then what you want to do is, uh, but you want to still be able to use it without, the, without having to walk around with a cable release sticking out of it, then what you can do is open the shutter and this is a little piece of a toothpick just the tip of a toothpick that I've broken off 
fit it right down in there's a little hole and look at that 